think. I'm going to move this over here. Okay, so this is the familiar home screen, Pixar X, E, and remove BG, and that's where we want to be for this first step. So simple. They made it so nice. You can open image in either one of these two places, but you want to make sure you have your images uh, on your hard drive. I don't think it can grab them from your Google Drive into Pixlr. And let's see what I want to do here. Let's go with this one. Yes. All right. So I'm going to hit open and look, no background. Now this saved, saves this as a PNG file, PNG as opposed to JPG or JPEG. A PNG file allows you to have a transparent background. A JPEG would assign it either solid white or solid black or something else. This allows it to be transparent. Now, because you're not bald, unless time has ravaged you in the last couple of weeks since I've seen you, um, you may have some stray hair or scarf material or whatever that you need to still remove. It does a great job, but it doesn't always know exactly what it's looking at. So if you have stray artifacts, you're going to go over here to fine tune. And this couldn't be more self-explanatory. If you've got components that you want to remove, you click remove. If you remove too much um, or the program removed part of your hair or your ear or something, you can click on keep. And whatever you brush back when you're on the keep mode, it will bring it back and it will remove whatever you paint over. You can tweak the size of your brush and how much it will kind of soften the edge. So it will be either more of a kind of fade transition or a very sharp, crisp edge. I'm just going to leave it at these settings. And really, I mean, it did a great job with me, but I'm going to do this because it left a little bit of the fuzz on the top of my head. So we're just going to keep it at remove. And let's see the size of my brush. I'm going to go a little smaller. And so I'm just going to move my cursor right along the top. Let's just see what happens. Fuzz be gone. Ooh. Now look, that gave me a really lumpy, uneven head. So... I don't want to do invert because that will give me back my entire background. And honestly, I don't know how to back up one step. So I'm just going to go back to keep and I'm going to paint some of that back in. Yeah, not bad. Now you can see it's a little soft. I don't know how big your screen is, but where I removed a little bit. It's a kind of a soft, fuzzy edge as opposed to this very sharp edge. But when we're talking an image that size, it's no big deal. Okay, at this point then we want to hit download. Bloop. And then Depending on how you want to do it, you could open all six of yours and remove all the backgrounds before you move back into Pixlr E. Totally up to you. But for the sake of expedience, let's, let's just jump right in there. So then we're going to go to Pixlr E. And we are going to, oh, that's not what I want. I want to move this. Oh, okay. Back to Pixar E. I want to open image. And we can open the image that I just did. Nope, 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 nope. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. There I am. 
All right, we're going to adjust. Again, this is a snap. Adjustments. We're going to go to auto black and white. Boom. Now, you are a discriminating photo two student. You can look at that and say, ooh, that's not so nice. That contrast is really flat, really flat. This is very gray. And I appreciate them making a program that will do this, but that's not a very good quality black and white photo. So we're going to go, once we convert it to auto black and white, we're going to go back up here to adjustments and we're going to go down to levels. And levels allow us some of the greatest degree of nuanced correction in black and white photos. First thing we're going to do is come out to the far left slider here on our histogram and we're going to pull it, pull it, pull it. And we're slowly going to watch if you, if you look at, just look at my cheek and watch how those pores and wrinkles and veins start to come to life. See that? Now, you don't want to go too far. The idea is to go as far as you can before you start losing detail. So as things start to disappear in the shadows or disappear in the highlights, that's when you got to back off. Now, I think, you know, that looks really good on my cheek and on the side of my head and on the freckles on top of my head, but I've lost a lot of detail above my eye. Okay, so I've got to kind of find a happy medium here. And so we're just going to pull that one into about there and stop. It'll be different for all of you based on your lighting, your skin color, a lot of other factors. And then I'm going to go over here to the, the highlights end of the sliders. We're going to pull that in and see what happens. Now you can see, like if you look at the top of my forehead, as soon as I start to bring it in, I just start losing all kinds of detail. I'm losing a lot of freckles. And I want those freckles. So I, I just think I'm going to leave it where it is all the way out to the right. Now the one in the middle, see, it allows me to bring in some texture and you definitely want to be looking straight on at your monitor so you can get the best idea what it's going to look like. Okay, I think we're going to call that pretty good. Now, some of you may notice that the, the shadow around my eye is still too dark, but everything else pre looks pretty good. So I'm going to make you aware, those of you that are familiar with Photoshop, um, and those of you familiar with the darkroom, which you all are, know that dodging and burning is a real thing. And you can dodge and burn with Pixlr. It's an unfamiliar looking icon. It's this guy right here, um, a circle kind of divided in half. And the dodge and burn tool will allow you to lighten or darken, lighten or darken. And you can play around with that. Um, just know this, that it will lighten or darken only what you have selected here, the highlights, midtones, or shadows. So if I wanted to darken this highlight on the top of my head, I'm going to go to darken and highlights. Now, if I want to lighten the area around my eye socket, I'm going to go to lighten shadows. And I like to keep the strength really low, um, like down in the 20 or less. And what that does is that makes the dodging or burning process happen very slowly. As opposed to just putting a big black line or a big white line on your piece. And then uh, you can also control the size of your brush. The softness. The step is, I'm just going to let you play around with that if you need to. But um, primarily with this one, I would just want to really 
lighten that area up a lot, uh, a little bit because your eyes should really pop. Eyes are something we are just immediately drawn to on portraits. And I probably will lighten that up a little bit as well. Once you get it where you want it, file, save. And again, it's going to save it as a PNG. And that is so it can preserve a transparent background, at which point you will just download and then you will be able to go capture that image wherever, wherever it's saved and pop it right in to your Google slide show.